I think I've always admired anyone who's attempted the English Channel and think it's just such a, a big scary goal that it's always interested me and in December 2019 I'd decided to, to do it and called a guy who had done it before and, and said, yeah, I made the decision. We must have mental telepathy because separately, without discussing it with Luke, he was on his mind as well. And then Luke came to me and said, if it's not cramping your style, you know, and I, and I said, mate, I don't have uh, ownership over the channel and I'd love to do it with a best mate. And, and then, um, then we decided to yeah. go on this fun journey together. Hey, Quino, how was that? That's very cool. The channel crossing can, can look at a number of different ways depending on the conditions um, and the time of year. There's going to be several hours you'll be swimming in the dark, in the pitch black with just a, a spotlight off the side of the boat so that you know where you are uh, and it's going to be 10 to 11 hours potentially in the water. It's not just being able to have a technique that holds up in open water and swim for a long distance but it's about the nutrition and managing energy and, and the cold is, is a big part of it as well. More people have climbed Mount Everest than have swum the English Channel. It's probably been over the last five weeks. I think uh, I've been some level of hypothermia probably three times in that time. Um, once down at uh, Clovelly when Quinn and I started in the dark at five and we we're doing a five hour swim and I got pulled out at four and a half hours because I was slurring my words, etc. And then the next week I said, bugger that, I'm going to break my record in an ice bath. I've gone for the nine bagger today, so $33 investment from the servo. Gonna go for a PB. Come on, baby. It's gonna go for, gonna break 30 minutes. One degree. <laughs> My personal motivation, look, it's twofold. Uh, you only live once. And uh, the more life experiences I have, the more kind of pronounced that is, is for me. And uh, I wanna see what's possible and I wanna have a positive influence on my, my colleagues at work, my group of friends, and of course my family, that's, that's most important. I've, I've learnt over years about the power of renewal and important to, you can't just take, 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 you've got to give back and there's plenty of different ways to give back and, um, you know, for me, it's, it's meditation, it's ocean swimming, it's, it's family, it's having a really clear sense of purpose, uh, it's service, those type of things that just get my resilience right up here because if I want to, if I expect to be able to do that, um, then I need to be doing this as well. The reason that we're doing this is we're trying to raise $74,000 for another ventilator for the Royal Hospital for Women. It was, uh, it was grand final night, I remember, and I wasn't at home and Cherie had gone to hospital and then it became apparent that she was, she was going into labour at 27 weeks. Ryder was born one kilo, resuscitated, um, in the delivery room. It was really emotional and, and scary and I felt very helpless as a father. Ryder was, was put on a Narva ventilator and, and for, the, for the first part of his life that, that helped save him and, and, and when he came, came good and were able to take him home and I just, the nurses and, and, the, and the doctors in, in there are just such phenomenal people and I wanted to do something for, for them and I said I would uh, and it's just um, you know, taken this long to be able to sort of find something that we could uh, raise enough money for and it was a big enough challenge. The Narva ventilator is new cutting edge technology that uses the baby's own breathing muscle, the diaphragm, to support their breathing. The way Narva works is that the baby has a nasogastric tube with some small electrodes that sit just next to the baby's breathing muscle which allows the ventilator to tell when the baby wants to take a breath and how hard they're trying to breathe. So we know that the ventilator is bad for baby's lungs, it's quite damaging. So with the use of this machine we can get babies off the ventilator sooner 
and keep them off the ventilator for longer. So we travelled over to Sweden and Finland to learn how to use the ventilator from the people that made it and from the units that were already using it. And we brought that back to Australia and are the first unit in Australia to be using this equipment. Incredible fundraising efforts like Luke and Quinn's Swim make a huge difference to our unit. We only get a certain amount of funding for the equipment in our unit and without super specialised expensive equipment like this and these fundraising efforts, we simply can't afford to give the babies the best care. You know, we're asking a lot of people to, 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 to donate money and um, so you know, our end of the bargain is we've got to be absolutely committed to, to going above and beyond and pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone and our family, the sacrifices they make to enable us all of this time and support and, and um, it is, is, you know, it needs to be for a, a purpose. We both are the type of people that will paint ourselves into a corner so that there's only, you know, one, one way we can go and, you know, we've got the, um, the charity running for premature babies that we're, we've committed to and, and, uh, and those, those little babies fight harder than, than we will ever have to in this preparation so um, I think mm. we've, got it, we've got enough levers to, to pull to get across the channel.